When we hear a baby cry, we feel empathy for the baby and try to soothe the baby. But how would you feel if your school-aged child tells you he has lost his homework for the fifth time this week? somewhere in the black hole he calls his backpack. Well, would you feel empathy for this child? I'm sure you can all think of times when you felt empathic to some, towards someone, and times when you found it difficult to empathize. And I am no different. But being a parent of a child with attention deficit Hyperactivity disorder, or ADD, ADHD, challenges my capacity for empathy. About five years ago, when my son was in middle school, I spent endless hours in homework battles, color coding his binder and writing across the folder, homework, turn in today, big, bold letters. And do you know? the homework would still come back home. Then I would get frequent calls from teachers telling me to do something about his oppositional nature, and he's not working to his potential, code for lazy. This all left me frustrated. I was summoned to a meeting with three of his teachers, and they informed me that he was in danger of failing the sixth grade. After all of that, I felt defeated, humiliated, and mostly saddened. It was in that moment that I got what it must feel like for my son to have to face these teachers on a daily basis, given his struggles. That day, I cried. I cried for us both. Sitting through that inquisition, I felt my son, and me by extension, had been morally indicted. Well, what can I do? ADHD does not go away. I had to do something. I did not like the kind of parent I was becoming. So, being the researcher that I am, I began to review the literature and conduct research on ADHD which has led me to this question. What if? What if I, we cultivated compassion for the ADHD child, shifting our stance from one of moral indictment to empathy? Well, let me share with you the world of the ADHD child. Imagine you're interacting with a child who does not follow the rules. In fact, this child seems to do the opposite of what you expect. It is a rare occurrence when this child finishes anything, homework, chores, even things that he expresses an interest in. And time? This child knows nothing about time. He is frequently late and does things at the last minute. No amount of cajoling, coaching, rewards, punishments, threats, bribery has worked in changing this child's behavior. And as a matter of fact, when any reasonable adult says to the child, do you realize you've just violated a rule or didn't do what you were supposed to do? The child simply shrugs or stares at you like a deer in headlights. Well, I am sure if I took a poll of how you were feeling listening, listening to this child, compassion would not be the word that comes to mind. You see, compassion is the feeling of empathy and the motivation to relieve the suffering of others. Most parents, teachers, relatives of ADHD people, we're motivated to relieve our own suffering. But how do you feel compassion for a misbehaving, hyperactive, inattentive, unapologetic child? The key to compassion lies in understanding the inner experiences of the child, which is simply this. Inherent in the condition of ADHD 
is an empathy deficit that interferes with the child's ability to take the perspective of others, which is a cognitive empathy deficit, or to share in the emotional experiences of others, which is an affective empathy deficit. Because of this deficit, the child I just described to you knows what the rules are. But when his impulsivity causes him to violate a rule, or his distractibility interferes with him completing a task, this child shows no remorse. He does not say, I'm sorry. You see, the emotional connection between the child's behavior and the feelings it engenders in others is missing. This disconnect can be explained in part by neurological research that shows deficits in areas of the brain are also responsible for impulsivity, poor impulse control, and other ADHD-like behaviors. So it's not that the child is oppositional or antisocial, but when the area of the brain that needs to produce that empathic response is most needed, the child is unable to respond empathically. So I'm reminded of my work with a young child, about 10 years old, I'll call him Jeff. Jeff came into my office, and he was very upset that his friend would not play with him at recess. I said to Jeff, it was only a few days ago you wanted nothing to do with your friend. Do you think he's still hurting over your fight? Jeff's response was, but I was nice to him today. You see, Jeff is having difficulty taking his friend's perspective. And psychodynamic research gives us some insight into why this is so. ADHD children do not understand or appreciate the nuances of interpersonal relationships. In fact, they fail to see people as complex as they are. Think of chocolate cake when you think of the ADHD child's experience of others. You may say chocolate cake? Yes, chocolate cake. So imagine a vanilla chocolate layered cake with raspberry frosting, and it's covered with raspberry filling, and it's covered with chocolate frosting. For the ADHD child, they see a chocolate cake. The lack of empathy does not allow them to appreciate the layers in the cake and the nuances. It is empathy that gives us this appreciation for the complexity of other people and allows us to respond in an empathic way. I'd like to share one more story with you. This is a conversation I've had with a student. I'll call her Beth. Beth explained to me that when she was in middle school, that there were teachers, every, different teacher every period. Beth said she felt lost, she felt confused, there was a lot of movement. This continued into high school. Beth felt very depressed. She explained that she would say to herself at the beginning of the day, I'm going to do better but by the end of the day, she would fall behind. You see, Beth had very loving parents, and they understood that Beth was having difficulty, but they were frustrated with Beth and really couldn't give her what she wanted. Beth, like many children with ADHD, is caught in a cycle of strivings and frustrations, especially when they struggle to meet goals that most would consider attainable. I was inspired by my conversation with Beth, but she left the conversation very much aware of her failings and her struggles. Beth could not have empathy for herself. The ADHD child and us are caught in this vicious cycle where the child's behaviors fail to generate an empathic response. And our response reinforces 
their harsh, critical self-evaluation, making it very difficult for them to empathize with their situation. So I've just given you some insight into the world of the ADHD child. You see a child with all their strivings, frustrations, anxieties, who have difficulty taking the perspective of others or empathizing with themselves. With this in mind, imagine a world with no ADHD label. In this world, the focus will no longer be on changing the child's behavior, but on shaping the inner experiences of the child. Parents and teachers would have an opportunity to have a transformative relationship with the child as they navigate homework battles and hyperactive behaviors in class. And the child's behavior would no longer be a signal of their defiance. But much like a baby's cry signals a parent of its distress, the ADHD child's behavior signals us to their discomfort and their struggles. This world is not so far-fetched. It's a relational world that can be created, and it has the power to impact the biology of the mind and shape behavior. The power of empathic relationships are reflected in the words of Lao Tzu, a Chinese philosopher who says, being deeply loved by someone gives us courage, and loving someone deeply gives us strength. This is the practice of cultivating compassion. Thank you.